let's create a custom gecko lib entity in Blockbench. Alright, we find ourselves back in Blockbench once more, and in this tutorial series, we're going to take a look at gecko lib models in Blockbench. So we're gonna make a custom entity right here. We're gonna texture it, and then we're gonna animate it as well. And then after we're done with the three planned gecko lib Blockbench tutorials, we're also going to add that particular entity into the game, both with Forge and Fabric. So that's gonna be very interesting indeed. You of course need a block bench for this and once you have that I will link the website in the description below once again. You can go to file plugins and you're going to need the GeckoLib animation utils plugin right here and once you have that installed you should be able to make a new GeckoLib animated model which is exactly what we wanted to make. So let's click on this and let's just go here create new model and this is going to be the chomper that's what i want to call it this is our custom entity that we're going to create and that's going to be very interesting so we're just going to confirm and now we have a custom entity now sometimes you want to go to file gecko lib model settings making sure that you are on entity because we're creating an entity right here you can of course also create an armor or a block or animated item that also works and is pretty much very similar to how you would do the entity so they're all very very similar indeed however we're just going to hit confirm we're going to make an entity here and that's going to be great now what's important for the entities when we actually later animate them when you add the cubes right you can we can add the cubes and we can resize them just like we did with the custom you know blocks and items before and we can move them around that's all fine and well however if we later want to animate them we can only animate the groups which are called bones over here right so we can only animate those so that keep that in mind so we're gonna have to basically do that now i want to make a chomper this is going to be a hostile entity uh, that actually will also have an attack animation and we're going to all do that later you know we're going to implement all of that in code as well after we're done with sort of the sub series here for the gecko level block bench tutorials and let's just start right so we're just going to start over here i'm just going to make something crazy you know ju we're just going to like do something so let's just make like a back of the head maybe right, i have a rough idea on what i want to create just so that we have something that's you know roughly interesting to look at let's just look at this way that's going to be okay. And then we can just make a, let's just duplicate this. So control D to duplicate it. If you want the absolute beginner stuff, you know, how to, how to move this around the different key binds and stuff like that. You can take a look. I'm going to link the block bench basics tutorials in the top right corner as well. And that's going to be very interesting. That could be very interesting for you as well. Let's duplicate this as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our pivot is in the center here. Then we're going to rotate it around like this. So this is going to be the mouth later. It's going to look very, very strange, but I love it. That's, that's going to be a cool idea. Duplicate this as well. Let's rotate it around as well into the other direction. Actually, what is the rotation here? 37.9, uh, 37.5 rather. So let's just do this as well. And let's move this down here. And now we have a, you know, a rough estimate. I think we need to do this like minus 45 or something like that so that it lines up a little bit better. But that's going to be good. There you go. And then we can just... Put this one, let's make sure that the correct one is selected, 45 over here as well. And that looks a little bit better. And they intersect a tiny bit. Let's just make this a little bit smaller then. So we can just make this a little bit smaller and then make this a little bit smaller as well. No, not bigger. I actually want to make this one smaller. There you go. And now we have sort of a big mouth that's going to open up and when it attacks, basically. And I What I recommend doing is that the cubes over here definitely rename them. So there's going to be the lower jaw not lower jar i'm i'm not we're not uh, creating a jar over here this is going to be the upper jar interestingly enough it's still the upper jaw but there you go and all of this is going to be the head so we can just put all of them in here into the bone this is going to be the head absolutely and then we're going to make another group and that's going to be the jaw i think that makes sense and then we'll, because we want to possibly control each of them individually we're going to put them into individual groups as well so this is going to be the upper jaw as well put that in here and then make a new group and that's gonna be the lower jaw as well just so that we have this already set up and any you know any differences any uh, any other things that we need to change here we can change later as well let's also add some cubes for the so this is going to be all the head this is going to just be the head base something like that and then maybe head base head base upper something like that i think it's gonna there you go and then this is going to be head base lower that's gonna be fine just so that you have everything organized, I highly recommend doing this as well, making sure that you know which block is which, basically. And then we're also going to add another cube over here, and that's going to be our eyes. So I want sort of eyes that come out the top of the head. 
So let's just see something like this. I'm actually okay with that, I think. Yeah, that, that would be fine. Let's do something like this. Now, make sure that they don't clip. I usually, you usually want to make sure that, you know, the different blocks don't clip because then sometimes they're Z fighting, which is a thing that you don't really want. So that basically it doesn't know which texture it should ex display properly. Then you know what? Actually, let's do like a, let's do like eye stocks and then make like a weird eye on top of that. Yeah, that's going to be good. So that's going to be 0.5 over here. Maybe a 0.5 on this one as well. There you go. Absolutely. And then I actually want this to be sort of like maybe maybe here. Yeah, that's going to be good. And then we're just going to duplicate this one. We could even give it, you know, multiple. We could even make this like more crazy. So we could maybe make this a little bit smaller. Duplicate this. Have another like eye stock coming out. And then they can move in independently from each other. So that's going to be kind of creepy. I like that idea. Actually, that's I, I like that. Yeah. Let's do that, and let's then do a little bit smaller. If you hold control, you can see that the resizing basically gets a little bit finer here, which is exactly what you want most of the time, because uh, if you do it like in, in, in big big steps, then sometimes that can be a little bit too much. Let's see, that's going to be a 1, and then that's going to be a point, 1.5, absolutely. So that's going to be our eyes over here. It almost, almost looks like, uh, you know, um, Gary from Spongebob. I mean, not really, but, you know... It, it, some something something like that. So that's going to be the. Uh, I guess let's take a look at it from the point of view from the creature itself. Also, I believe that it's not centered, but we can fix that in a moment. This is going to be the right lower right lower eye stock. Yeah, let's do that. That's okay. And then this is going to be the right upper eye stock. So like I said, best thing to really make sure that you know exactly what everything is. And then this is the right eye right eye here there you go and let's actually make sure that all of those are inside of a new group called the right eye but then i also want to make sure that each of the individual you know pieces here is also in a different group or a different bone because i want to make them you know make the, this basically movable independently of each other and that's why we need the bones because like i said when we animate this in a future tutorial you can only animate the bones and not the individual cubes that's very important this is going to be once again the right lower I stock and then it makes it underscores automatically that's fine right upper I stock that's fine as well making sure we spell this correctly there you go and then this is the right underscore I there you go and then what we actually could do is we could just duplicate the right eye here that probably makes a lot more sense making sure that this is fine and then this is we need to move the right eye maybe to here and then this one maybe to here now it should be roughly centered there's still a little bit of a of a weirdness there. I'm not 100% sure whether or not it's centered. Let's actually take a look at from above. Yeah, it really isn't, is it? So that's going to be position negative 0.23. Let's make sure that this is fine. All right, let's actually also size this up a little bit, 0.5, into the Y direction. And that's going to be okay. So this is now the left eye, by the way. So let's actually rename all of those. All right, I think that's a good start over here. So that's going to be closing the right eye, left eye, the jar. I love it. I actually call it jar. That's hilarious. There you go. And then we can close the head as well. And we can now make a body. So that's going to be the next part. That's going to be the body. So let's just do a body base over here. First of all, we're probably going to make it so that it's sort of based in like two parts, I would say. That's most likely going to be the best idea so we're just going to do something like this so that's going to be maybe the first base maybe a little bit bigger so first one and then duplicate it once again Control d and then we're going to rotate this one a little bit so if you go to to the rotate tool right make sure to center the pivot because otherwise it's going to rotate around this particular you know uh, pivot point and that's you know usually not what you want you can see that's kind of weird but if we center the pivot then it rotates around the center point of this actual cube so let's just like make this like rotate tiniest bit right maybe like uh Maybe like a 7.5 or something like that. And then we're just going to move it a little bit up here. And then maybe we're going to make it clip a little bit just so that it looks a little bit more interesting. All right, so it's sort of like this. And then and let's do a third one over here. And we're going to also center the pivot on this one. And we're going to rotate this around in the other direction. Negative 0.75. Negative 7.5, absolutely. And then we're going to move it back here a little bit and a little bit higher up. And now it's like a little bit of a... You know, it's almost like a slug, but then we're going to make it walk. So let's do the following. Let's actually select both of the 
different groups over here. And let's just move the entire thing up by... Let's go with like 215. I think that that's okay. Yeah, that's going to be okay. And that, so this is going to be the upper body base. That's going to be okay. Yeah. And that's going to be the middle body base. Middle body base. And that's going to be the lower body base. Once again, just so that we have everything correctly named over here, I cannot recommend this enough because once you... If you ever want to change this again, having this named correctly is just going to make this much easier. And let's get a new group over here. That's going to be the legs, first of all. And that's going to be the first legs. This is going to be the right leg, right underscore leg. And let's also make sure that this immediately inside of a group, or that it already is a group, and then let's make the left leg here as well. There you go. And then we can create the cube. And we're also going to call this the right leg. Although the leg is probably going to be multiple parts, let's just create a new here and then let's see so maybe what we want to do is we want to get this over right here maybe something like this and then maybe something like this so let's do maybe a 0.5 i think i'm okay with that um and then let's duplicate this one so that we have a roughly like a knee ish right so that we have a rough separation uh, i think we can make this a little bit smaller maybe so that we can move this up here and then we can move this up here. And then maybe we can even do a foot. That would that would probably work, right? I mean, it's not gonna be the most interesting thing, but it might that might actually work. I'm not I'm not too worried about this at the moment. That's pretty good. Let's set the pivot points for all of those cubes in the middle of them, just so that's a little easier. And then we're gonna start with a little bit of a rotation here. And then we're gonna do the same thing right here, just in the opposite direction. I'm gonna move this up a little bit, probably make this a little bit, you know, bigger so that it, extends down and then we're just going to once again duplicate the right leg over here uh, this would actually be the left leg so that's going to be pretty good so we can just move the right leg now and there you go making sure that this is now the left leg because we did it from the point of view of the creature itself and that would of course be the left leg this would be the right leg so that's already pretty cool and we can be very versatile with the you know different things of course the more cubes you add, in theory, right, when we, and we actually do have to add a different bones for these cubes as well. So this is going to be the upper leg, upper, upper left leg. And the more cubes you add, the more versatile, of course, your animations can become. However, I will say this, all of your animations are going to be, like, they're not going to be easy to do, basically. It's, um, animations are actually quite difficult to, to make especially like good looking ones are actually not that easy however we're just going to see we're just going to make this interesting and then we're going to then we're going to see also this is the right leg so there you go all right so I renamed everything right here let's do the same in the left leg All right, and there we go the two legs all named correctly all done and then let's just add as well just so that we have it two arms as well we, we can even add four arms could be kind of cool but i think two arms is going to be enough i think we're you know having a, a very interesting entity over here already so that's going to be the left arm and then let's just duplicate this as well duplicate and that's going to be the right arm let's start with the left arm we're probably going to uh, copy the left arm anyway so let's just do that that's going to be the left arm so on this side over here Let's just make this like a, I don't know, like, do we want to make this like a buff snail? You know, like a buff snail that's going to hit hard? Or do we want this to be like more of a weird one where it's like a little stick arms? Something like that. Yeah, we can do the stick arms here. But maybe let's start with, let's start with one cube. And then we're going to have a second cube coming out of it, of course, right? So we're going to make sure that the pivot is fine. And then we're going to rotate it by, oh, let's do like negative... 45 degrees. I think that's going to work out very well, actually. And then, for the sake of argument, let's actually do something crazy. Let's make it so that it's like three different ones. So that's going to be a 90 degree one, actually a negative 90 degree. That's going to be a little bit better. Also, before we rotate, let's make sure the pivot is centered because that's always going to be a bit of a better thing. And then let's just do this. And then we have like three different arms that we can move. And then we're going to add a hand as well. So it's going to look like absolutely crazy. That's some sort of eldritch horror over here. But once again, just an interesting entity, basically. That was my idea. And you can see, you can pretty much get as creative as you want. The Gecko Lip models, 
definitely offer you much more, you know, just like a crazy amount of freedom, basically, on, on what you want to do with them, right? So we can even make like a crazy hand. You know what? Do we really want to make like a crazy hand or maybe we just want to make a, you know, like a rough approximation of a hand right now? Because I've, I honestly, you know, hands are very hard in both drawing as well as in a 3d modeling so i'm gonna be honest i'm i'm probably okay with just having it like have a, like a stump at a ha as a hand i think that's gonna be okay let's just make sure that we have the groups in here as well there we go so the left arm all done and let's just duplicate this move it over and what we should be able to do is if we center the pivot right let's just see this so if we center the pivot for the arm itself Let's rotate it around 180 degrees like this, and then if we we actually don't want to move the pivot, we want to move the entire arm. There you go, and then just move it up, and then okay. So now we have you know a roughly symmetrical arms here as well. Let's just rename them as well. I get that renaming can sometimes be a little bit annoying, right? It's a lot of stuff to do, but really it will really help you along after you you know if you would really want to change this up at some point. Uh, having everything named right is just going to be much, much easier. Anyway, so this is going to be our custom model over here. We'll see what this is going to do, right? It's it's a little weird, it's a little crazy, but I think that this might work. So, you know, there might be some interesting things like making this a little bit smaller over here just so that, you know, the head looks a little bit nicer and maybe making this a little bit smaller in this direction and making it a little smaller in this direction just so that it's a little, you know, more interesting to look at. But overall, I think this is a really, really good start for a you know, custom entity model over here. And in the next tutorial, we're going to texture it with the added paint tool over here. So we're going to use the inbuilt painting tool from Blockbench itself. We're just going to give it a rough, you know, estimation of how this might look like. Once again, I'm not a great artist in this uh, instance, probably not going to look too crazy, but that is not the point. The point is just that, number one, hopefully this is sort of inspiring you to just try out a bunch of stuff. Just just go for it. Just do some crazy stuff. And even if it doesn't work for the first time, you can always tweak it later, right? So because what we can just do is we can just save this. I'm just going to save this as a Tromper BB model. And there you go. Now the model here has been saved. And we can continuously work on this if we wanted to. So that is actually really cool. Now the model will also be available to you in the description below for download. If you want to continue with this on your own time basically. Or something like that. Then you can also do this. But for the time being I think we're going to be fine with this. And in the next tutorial on this series we're going to texture it. And I hope I'll see you there. So yeah.